Russell Moore offers an excellent summary of the historic premillennialist position. Listen as I read. Jesus at His coming resurrects those who have trusted in Christ, commencing their promised rule with Him. The armies fighting against the returning Messiah at Armageddon are destroyed. But presumably, this does not mean that every unconverted person is killed. The survivors of the nations who submit to the rule of Christ continue to live, marry, and repopulate the earth. The curse is rolled back, though not completely reversed. The nations no longer war against one another since King Jesus rules in peace. Open rebellion is nowhere seen since Jesus has all of His enemies under His feet. One could assume that resurrected believers who now have authority over the nations are given specified spheres of governance over the universe. At the end of this epoch, Satan is released and initiates an insurrection of human subjects against the kingdom of Christ. This rebellion, as all rebellions against the anointed of God, is defeated and the judgment of men, angels, and nations ensues. End quote. Moore's last sentence offers another way to keep the judgment of all people together at one time. Recall yesterday's presentation. To delay it until after the millennium for everyone. For believers, the judgment then would be a public vindication of the state to which they have already attained. Irrespective of this last item of debate, the socio-political ramifications of historic premillennialism are enormous. Not only does America not exist to support a distinctively Jewish state in Israel, we, like all nations, must call whoever rules in Israel to support liberty and justice for all its inhabitants even on dispensationalist presuppositions, with godly Jews controlling the land, the sojourner and foreigner in the land were, by Old Testament law, to be treated with equal freedom and fairness as the permanent resident. There is no biblical justification on any of the evangelical understandings of eschatology for oppression of the Palestinians by the Jews or for terrorism by the Palestinians against the Jews. On a historic premillennialist understanding of Scripture, there isn't even any biblical pretense on which such discrimination or terrorism could be based. No Christian should ever dare to support any legislation or diplomatic policy on the grounds that it privileges the Jewish state over any other residents in Israel or vice versa. Tragically, millions of Christian dollars sent to Israel on account of the misguided views of people like Falwell have been used to persecute Jewish Christians already living in Israel and to keep many other Jewish believers out of the land altogether. And whereas American evangelicals too often uncritically support the Jewish state in Israel, evangelicals in the rest of the English-speaking world largely coterminous with the former British Empire to often uncritically support the Palestinians against Israel. Neither extreme is biblically justified. As for the rest of the world, too often allegiances are based simply on which theological, denominational, or cultural tradition has been evangelized in that area. Far too few Christians of any nationality or theological affiliation go back to the Scriptures to study them sufficiently for themselves on this topic. For those willing to do so, two of the best guides remain Colin Chapman's Whose Promised Land and Gary Burge's Whose Land, Whose Promise. <laughs> 